Are you an existing or budding freelancer that's looking to earn more and do more in the business that you are creating? Well, today's video is for you. Now, I've worked with hundreds of freelancers looking to up their game in order to be sought after, right? And to stand out from the sea of sameness of other freelancers offering the same gigs. So today's video, I'm gonna really break down how you really go from a doer mindset as a freelancer to a strategic mindset freelancer in order to earn more and give better value to your clients. Escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hey, thanks so much for being here and joining me for another video episode this week on Screw the Cubicle TV. If you're new here, I'm Lydia Lee. I'm a work reinvention strategist and I work with people like freelancers, consultants, coaches, and really any service-based provider business uh, that really wants to design an amazing business that helps them to fulfill and have the life that they dream to have. So my sweet spot is really helping you to optimize your value in the marketplace uh, and really earn well for the gifts and talents that you have to share as an independent business owner. So today's video is all about giving more value as a freelancer. So actually, even if you don't identify yourself as a freelancer, I think this video and how you really can provide uh, higher level options to work with your clients and how to actually appear to be a lot more um, valuable than maybe other people that are playing in the same marketplace as you are. Uh, either way, whether you're a coach, you are a consultant, any service-based business owner, you will really benefit from today's video. And again, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell button in order to know uh, every single video that I release every week and you'll be able to participate in free education and trainings on this channel. And don't forget, I also have an amazing uh, masterclass that you might want to sign up for, especially if you are in the journey of reinventing your work and reinventing your lifestyle choices, right? To be able to be your own boss, work for yourself and create autonomy over your time freedom. Uh, I have a masterclass called Reinvent Yourself, how to live out your vision for a meaningful life and career that you can sign up for at the link below this video uh, or the card that's popping up right now for you. Okay, so this video is all about going from freelancer, right, to a strategist so that you can earn more by giving more and giving higher value to your clients and be someone that is hard to beat in the marketplace if you work to create better value for your clients. Now, it's no, uh, you know, it's no mystery that there will be other people that do what you do in the marketplace. Probably you have been comparing yourself to them and maybe even looking at their offers and what they do. Uh, but as service providers, part of our job in order to create better income for ourselves and be more in control of what we can earn and our earning potential, we have to always take that pause to go, what can I give differently? Right? How can I really help my clients get to results faster? And in a way that I do it, right, in the skill sets and experience that I have that I bring to the table that makes me uniquely positioned for particular types of clients where when they find me and they understand what I know how to do and can do, right, they don't have to think any further into hiring me. And the rest of the competition just falls by the wayside because you have clearly articulated why you're valuable to hire. So really going from doer to strategist, to be honest, the first step is really upgrading your mindset, right? Like when we think of freelance work, if you've been a freelancer, uh, if you are a budding freelancer, very likely you've seen some of the sort of common services, right? Common options and offers that other people who are freelancers are providing. Uh, it makes me really think of, you know, uh, one of my first freelancing clients that I worked with several years ago named Marilyn, who had been a 10 year freelancer and still working like 12, 14 hour days. <laughs> I don't know how she su survived and sustained this because she had two little kids to take care of. But when she came to me, she was at that brink of exhaustion, right? She told me that she had created almost like a 10 year man-made prison for herself in terms of her time and her freedom. What her goals were originally to become a freelancer, to work independently on her own, was to be able to spend time with her kids. But more and more at the way she was operating, it was clear that something needed to change if she wanted that dream to be fulfilled. 
And part of that piece of what Marilyn and I spoke about in our first session was the mindset piece, really going from doing what other people want us to do and taking on any odd jobs that anyone would give to us. And that is actually what sets the tone for the boundaries that we put into our business. Now, just because you have competitors doesn't mean that you have to do everything under the moon to prove yourself and to be valued in the marketplace. If anything, if you do everything that people want and you don't have any terms and you don't have any boundaries around what you will do and won't do, you will actually be less remembered for your expertise because you're become a most, almost like a generalist rather than a specialist. So freelancers that can specialize in an area or any service-based business provider that can specialize in particular areas uh, can make more money because people are so clear when they hear that core problem that you solve and the stage of problems that you really come forth to do, that's when they know they really need you and they don't need anybody else, right? But when you think about going from doer to a strategist, we have to stop taking a bunch of odd jobs that aren't actually giving, letting us share our gifts and share our talents in the most powerful way. And if you're someone like Marilyn, who have, you know, almost she had a decade's worth of freelancing experience, she's definitely proven her worth in the marketplace, but she didn't believe it at that point, right? And maybe you're feeling it that way as well, that you should be lucky just to have clients. But even if you're starting out, that's a trap that you don't want to fall into because like I said, that sets, that sets the precedence for the kind of business experience that you're going to have, right? Having all sorts of random clients come to you with random jobs and you can't control the structure of how you work and what results you really want to provide for your clients. So when you think about the people that you hire, right? For like people that you could go on upwork.com for, right? Freelancers that you might hire or contractors that you might hire from sites like that. You'll see there's lots of competitors, right? That are from all sorts of places in the world that might even charge lower prices, right? Because of where they're located. And that can be um, disheartening, right? If you're a North American or, you know, someone that actually has these really good experience, you don't want to charge low, right? For your fees, but you've got to provide something more than just the job or just that one design, right? Or just that one measly task that people come to you for. You want to start really attracting clients that really value an experience with you where you, they can come to you for a one-stop shop for a particular issue, a particular goal that they're trying to meet. And yes, you might still do the doing, right? Which is like design work, right? Web design, graphic design, copywriting, whatever it is that you are freelance freelancing activity is for, but you want to position your expertise as someone who's also a strategist, someone that has the ability to think bigger picture, to really help them understand their vision for what it is they're really trying to achieve and then set the right goals for them. And it's almost a little bit like you're a little bit of a mentor too for this business owner while you're doing the work that's necessary, or at least like Marilyn did, going from a one woman show to a small agency of three people, is her repositioning her role in the company to be less of the main uh, primary designer. She's a graphic designer and a web designer. Uh, and instead, being in a position and a role where she's the uh, customer relations specialist, she's the one that does all the business development tasks, which is probably the most important role for her in the business, right? And be available to the client for the high level strategy in the inaugural points of the project. And then when that's signed off, that's when it gets outsourced to the junior workers that can do that job. And that's how she's built her agency today. So choosing to be a strategist, choosing that role you want to play, even if you don't have staff right now to outsource some of the measly work to, you're getting yourself ready to do that, right? Right? So you can grow your business and scale your time as a freelancer and take on more valuable projects and target the kind of projects and the kind of clients that will pay for that kind of higher value. So how do you really start thinking like a strategist? Well, the first thing, just looking at the lay of the land of projects you've ever been involved in as a freelancer or projects that you're looking to be involved in as a freelancer, right? Is looking at the gaps of opportunities to do more with your clients in the existing projects that you're currently doing or are thinking that you would be doing. So for example, bring Marilyn's story back into the mix, right? As a web designer, people come to her for the web design, right? The obvious choice, the obvious thing, right? But what's really underneath their confidence to have a great site is not just having pretty branding, right? 
It's not just having um, a, a great template that looks good on the online world. What they really want a website to do, and if you're a strategist, you would think bigger this way, is how can I ensure I'm designing the right kind of site for the right kind of call to actions and the right kind of customer journey experience this business owner needs? And so if you gave, as Marilyn did, right, a much more lucrative package, that's not just about designing a website, but really understanding what your customers need when they first come to your site, how you want them to flow through your site, what is the story you really want to tell on that website, right? Like, how do you want people to perceive your brand when they first land on it? You have five seconds to make an impression. And all these little elements, right, in the inaugural visit of a website really matters to make sure that person stays on the site and goes through looking for what they need with ease. So by offering a more strategic view, right, and a strategy session first, right, really asking the right questions, being a strategist before she becomes a designer is what people pay for, right? So she can charge more for those websites because they're not templated, they're not just some template site she pulls up and you get the same one like everyone else gets. It's a very well thought out journey and a well thought out customer journey for, that, for the needs of that business that makes the value of working with someone like Marilyn so much higher, right? Than any other web designer that she might be competing with. So take a look at your existing projects right now. So whether you're a graphic designer, copywriter, whatever service that you do as a freelancer, where are areas that you've seen your customers kind of suffer a little bit or where you're like, oh God, I couldn't do the job that they told me to do. If only I was involved earlier of a point where I could clarify certain things for them, help them plan out some things. Cause right now when they, what they're giving me is a little fuzzy, and it's actually making my job <laughs> a little harder. Where could you be involved earlier on, er, earlier on in the process where you can strategically plan things more efficiently for them, right? And what would you do differently? So, with some of the clients have been struggling with some, some of those things. If you could redesign that package and get them uh, starting at a point where it would make the rest of the job that they hired you for more easy. Or what are some hidden expectations, right? Or hidden goals that they may not even have seen until they started working with you that you want to point out, right? Like when you're marketing your services, that these parts actually make the end goal, the end outcome, the end product that I'm doing for you much more successful, right? Work backwards and start to see these missing gaps of opportunity that can give you the clues to what it is that you might need to provide in addition to your obvious service that can help you to shine through at, as being more of a high level person to work with rather than a doer. Okay. If there's any questions about that, comment below this video. I'm so happy to help you discern what that could mean to you. And lastly, what could actually help your clients fulfill their bigger vision, right? This is very related to the question I just asked about gaps of opportunity is take a look at how your customers want to experience the service. <coughs> Sorry about the cough. Um, Sometimes when we're thinking a little bit about our offers, we always think about the end goal, right? The pretty site, the completed copywriting, right? Like I've worked with multiple copywriters in the seven years I've had a business. And I can tell you there are ones that charge double of what the rest charges that I would continue working with, not because they're better writers, but because the process that they took in order to get to the end result that really feels like me, right, that really sounds like me, was what I was actually really buying. People buy an experience, people buy a process, people buy a system that you need to articulate and be very clear about, you know, when you are on the sales calls with a client or when you're presenting your services as a freelancer, right? So really think about some of the, sometimes intangible steps, like maybe it's the conversation you ask, you have them get on with you for with the, before you start designing anything or writing anything. It could be that you take the time to have an assessment, right? About their business, about their vision, about their goals before you start doing any work at all. It might be that there is a hidden talent that you find yourself actually doing right now in your services that you're not charging for that can actually really help you amp up the value and hence increasing your prices and positioning yourself as a top level credible expert in your field. So think about that with existing projects or projects you've already started to work with, right? Or past projects even, and do a little postmortem, <laughs> right? Of these projects and start to see 
where areas you can really amp up the value and provide a better package, a better experience, a much more whole level, wholehearted journey that your customers are really buying and knowing how to sell that experience rather than just the end results. Now, I hope that was helpful for you if you are a budding or existing freelancer hoping to do more and earn more by giving higher value. And as usual, I would love to hear your thoughts. What was one of the biggest aha moments or insights that you gathered from this video that you believe could really help you go from a freelancer to strategist or from a doer to a strategist? I would love to hear from you under the comments below. And if you have any questions, I am always here for you to answer them as well. Now, if you are interested to actually help build that model, right? Of going from freelancer to a strategist or building better offers, right? Much more aligned offers with what the market needs and how you can stand out by leveraging your gifts, your hidden talents, some of your tangible and intangible skill sets that you can bring to the table where you can really give a value packed offer and know what it is that you're doing with your clients in that process and experience, I would love to talk to you. As I, that is my work. That is what I do to help really people to design that framework of that offer and how to sell it and how to position yourself in the marketplace so that you can be sought after. Uh, you can book a free discovery call with me where we have a human to human chat about what's going on in your business or the business you're looking to build. And I can give you some insights on what it is that you should be focusing on in order to reach those goals that are really important to you and whether or not we are a good fit to work together. Either way, you walk away with fresh perspective and a fresh look at what really matters to build a meaningful business that allows you to live the life that you want. Thank you so very much for joining me. And as always, I very appreciative of your time. And if this video hit a note for you, it resonated with you deeply, don't forget to share it with someone you know that might actually benefit from it as well. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today.